Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is CRA soft skills, time management, and effective site relationships, and will be presented by Elizabeth Waddell from the CRA Helper. Elizabeth Waddell received her bachelor's degree in clinical research and has been in the clinical research industry for over 20 years. She holds the certified CRA credential, which is awarded to a CRA who has met eligibility requirements, demonstrated proficiency of specific knowledge and job-related skills, and passed the standardized CRA certification exam. Elizabeth began her career as an in-house clinical research associate and later transitioned to an on-site CRA. After 14 years of monitoring, she moved from her senior CRA position to a line manager role that focused on training and managing new CRAs. After about four years in this new position, she founded her own CRA training company called the CRA Helper, where she provides online training to those new to the CRA role and the industry, and in addition, hosts a helpful podcast for CRAs. So as a CRA, being professional is key in the way we dress, act, and communicate. In addition to the relationships with your study team, you will also be the main point of contact between your sites and the sponsor. So when you work at a contract research organization, you represent the CRO as well as the sponsor. So whether it be with the site, though, the sponsor or your team, I can't stress this enough. We always want to be easy to do business with. We want to be approachable, approachable and dependable. Do your job in a way that makes things easier on others, too. So, for example, um, of making things easier on others, sometimes um, on the study, CRAs may submit their documents to the electronic TMF themselves, or maybe there's a point person assigned where the CRAs will send their documents to that person and they will submit it to the ETMF. So on a study, I had noticed that there was a certain naming convention and format that the, um, the person our study would use when she saved the files. So I thought, well, to make it easier on her, why don't I save it the same way under that same naming convention? So she doesn't have to rename it every time I send her something. So just things like that to make things easier on other people. And one of the biggest compliments I would get from managers and leads was, I wish we could clone you. And that really did mean the world to me. So as I discuss ways here to build rapport with your sites, keep these things in mind for your study team too. Before you start each day, make a list of tasks that require the most immediate attention. And the clinical research industry priorities are constantly changing. Therefore, your list may have to be adjusted. And this does happen. You have all your priorities set. And then something comes up, um, an email that you have to follow up with an issue, maybe a protocol deviation or something affecting subject safety, data integrity. That's going to definitely go to the top of the list, as well as your um, anything that's due would be at the top of your list. So priorities can definitely change at a moment's notice. But I always re um, recommend prioritizing what you need to complete each day. Reminders are a must, especially for me. I have to do this. But in my experience, I would set reminders on my Outlook calendar as well as reminders on my phone when something was due. So, for example, after each visit, I would set reminders when my draft report was due, when it was due to be finalized, uh, when my expense report was due. And I would also set reminders each week for my timesheet submission. And then when that next training was due. So remember the LMS system, I would sort by the earliest due date. And I would make sure to put that in a reminder as well of when to get that completed. Because it's important to not let anything slip through the cracks. And I did want to give this tip regarding trip report completion here. So when you submit your draft trip report to your lead CRA, I don't want you to think, oh, well, it's in their hands. They're responsible for it now if it's late. No, 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 no. It'll still be, it'll still be a responsibility. It's still into your name. So after it's submitted to your lead, keep track of when you receive correspondence from them, either that it's final or if they want any revisions or um, clarifications or corrections made. You want to make sure if you haven't heard anything back and it's getting close to that finalization date, I would definitely recommend reaching out to your lead to see if there's anything that needs to be addressed or corrected in order to finalize the report on time. So I just definitely wanted to point that out that just because it's submitted to the lead doesn't mean it's out of your hands or you're not responsible for it anymore. So in summary, soft skills are so important for a CRA to possess. Remember, sites are customers too, and we must build and maintain effective relationships with them. Always remember, we are a team. Time management is an issue for CRAs of all levels prioritize and keep track of metrics and deliverables. Always be coachable, approachable, adaptable, and flexible. Being able to adapt to an ever-changing environment will help you succeed in this industry. 
I also invite everyone to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses and webinars in various areas of research, ethics, compliance, and professional development.